stand for the call to worship as you're able. Keep awake. Christ is coming. Wait for the Lord. Love is coming. Prepare the way. Hope is coming. Worship the Lord. Christ is coming soon.
rejoice and be glad in it. Whether you are here in the nave or listening on the radio or watching on the live stream, it is good to be here and worship with you. I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving holiday with lots of food and fellowship. And in that spirit of fellowship, I invite you to turn to one another and share signs of Christ's peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. We light this candle as a symbol of the hope we have in the promise of Christ's coming. For the Lord will fulfill the promise to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us God's way. Prepare the way of the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. of Matthew, the 24th chapter, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 
For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Throughout the Gospels, we hear how Jesus explicitly welcomed the children unto him, and in that same spirit, we welcome the children forward right now for a special time with children. Children are always welcome to stay with us in worship. We have a special time for those ages 4 through 5th grade, immediately following children's time. So come on down. Uh, Stephen, is everything okay? Yep, just, uh, just waiting. For what? what? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. <laughs> what am I waiting for? Well, this is a season of waiting. Right, this is Advent, and as we begin something, we're sort of, we're waiting for something to come. Does anybody know what we're waiting for this season? What do you think? We're waiting for Christmas? Yeah, that's true. We're also in this Advent season. We're waiting for the kingdom of God. We just heard a scripture passage that said, be ready because we don't know when it's coming. So, I'm waiting. But you know, now that I think about it, it's kind of awkward to wait, especially for those listening on the radio, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's sort of awkward. We have to take this time, and we're kind of waiting, and Christmas is coming, and I know we do so much waiting at this time. We just want it to get here, don't we? So we can keep checking off our Advent calendar as we wait for that morning when everything comes that we want to come, right? All of those glorious moments. Well, the Christian faith on this day, the Advent season, is about waiting for the kingdom of God. That's that vision that Jesus had for a world in which we all love our neighbor as ourselves, in which we love God and we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's not the world we live in, is it? Sometimes we really wish that it could be, but the truth is we live in a world where that's not always the case. So we wait. But you know what? I think, I think that maybe there's stuff we can be doing while we wait, so we don't have to just stare at each other and have these awkward moments where I just stare at you. I think there are things we can be doing, right? 
that maybe we can each take a step closer to another person. We can each find a way to bring a little more love into our lives, a little more kindness, a little more compassion. That's something that we see this season, but maybe we can carry it with us so that as we wait for the kingdom of God, we recognize that we help to bring it about. That, as Luke says, the kingdom of God is in us, among us, a part of us, that once we love our neighbor as ourselves, the kingdom of God will arrive, that Christ will arrive when we find ourselves closer to one another. So maybe this Advent season, as we wait and we wait and we wait, we can recognize that there's something we can do while we wait. Can we give thanks to God for that while we say the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much. Since its inception, Asbury First and members of Asbury First have been participating in Project Chacocente, which is a project in Nicaragua that was designed to help families move out of the Managua dump into a contentional community. We have supported with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. We are pleased today to welcome several members of that, com that community here to share with us some of the ways in which Asbury First has impacted their lives. So, without further ado, I welcome Omar Hernandez, Juan Carlos Paez, and Jacqueline Hernandez, who will share with us a little bit about what has been happening down in Project Chacocente. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, my name is Omar Hernandez. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, I have many friends uh, already from here from Asbury First. Um, I am uh, the Project Chacocente Legals legal representative and it's a uh, liaison with its board of directors here in the United States and with the government of Nicaragua. When you visit us in Nicaragua, um, also, I, I also serve as your guide and translator. And um, 
I have visited uh, Asbury First many times uh, before, but now, by God's grace, I have brought my dear friends, um, Jacqueline Hernandez and Juan Carlos Pais. Uh, it's their first time ever on a plane, <laughs> and they just uh, delighted themselves by seeing for the first time uh, snow falling. They had never seen snow in their lives and never been this cold in their lives. <laughs> so welcome, Jacqueline. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jacqueline. I am the director of Chacocente Christian School. We employ 20 dedicated teachers and staff uh, and we provide our 134 students from kindergarten through high school uh, with an excellent education that includes full day classes and nutrition lunch. The parents of the students volunteer their service every day. Um, thank you, Asbury First for being our partner in this ministry. Thank you so much for your help, for your pray, and um, it was a pleasure to share with us this time. Thank you so much. And we have uh, our friend Juan Carlos. Buenos días a todos. Uh, mi nombre es Juan Carlos Pais. Uh, soy el coordinador de la familia para el proyecto Chacocente. Uh, esto significa eh, ser un enlace entre el proyecto y la comunidad yacente. Good morning, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos, and I am the family coordinator. Uh, which means I serve as the liaison between the Project Chacocente and the surrounding community. Um, también superviso, superviso toda la, uh, la construcción que hacemos en Chacocente. Um, eh, es mi placer eh, ser su jefe cuando eh, venga y trabajemos juntos en Nicaragua. I also supervise all the construction we do at Chaco Sente. So it's my pleasure uh, to serve you when you come and work alongside uh, with us in Nicaragua. Uh, deseamos que todos nuestros graduados motivados puedan ir a la universidad si lo desean. We want all our motivated graduates uh, to be able to go to college if they want to. Entonces, Omar y yo aprobamos las solicitudes de becas uh, y eh, ayudamos a nuestro estudiante a que use el fondo eh, responsablemente y uh, que tengan eh, éxito académico. So, Omar and I approve the scholarship request that we get from the students um, and help the students use the funds responsibly and uh, so they, they can be uh, successful academically. Muchas gracias, uh, Asbury First, uh, por caminar con nosotros. Thank you so much, Asbury First, for walking with us. Gracias. <clears throat> and, and above all, we want to thank uh, all the people of Asbury First United Methodist Church for your great uh, friendship with us all these years and uh, for your generous uh, financial support to us um, and your prayers, especially during these difficult times. Um, you are making a huge difference in our lives and the lives of our students and also the families of Chaco Sente and the surrounding community. We invite everyone here today um, to come down and see the miracles 
that your faithfulness enable us to accomplish uh, and be witness with us of all the progress uh, that it's going on at Chaco Sente um, with God's guidance and help. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Thank you so much, Asbury First uh, United Methodist Church. God bless you and may God bless America. Thank you, Omar Juan Carlos and Jacqueline. For those who may have felt a little stirring in their hearts, in that sort of Wesleyan way, feeling your heart strangely warmed, there is a trip to Project Chaco Sente to Nicaragua at the end of January, the beginning of February, in that week of trans transition between those two months. If you've felt like maybe you might, might like to go down, it is worth a trip to see some of the miraculous things happening down there in that community. I want to say a special thank you to Larry and Robin Gage for their uh, tireless work in helping to support this community and connect our community with their community as we have grown together in this. If you're visiting with us this morning, we just want to take a moment to say we're really glad that you're here. Hasbury First is not a perfect place, but we recognize that we're a little more perfect with you than we are without you. We'd invite you to join us in our mission to love God and neighbor, to live fully, to serve all, and repeat. We'd also invite you to sign that red tablet, which you'll find towards the center of your aisle. Respectfully, we'd ask that everyone signs it, that we might recognize your presence among us this morning. If you've been noticing some people have name tags and you would like one, good news, you may have one. Simply go to the welcome desk or go online. We'll have one ready for you within just a couple of weeks. This Advent season is a season of waiting, but there is plenty to do while we wait. And so I'd invite you to take a look at your bulletin, see some of the opportunities there are for engagement within the life of this congregation. Maybe it's the contemplative service, maybe it's singing and having some cocoa and carols around the Christmas tree out front, or maybe it's just taking another step towards something that you've wanted to do, volunteering or giving of yourself during this season. We encourage you and we stand ready to assist you in any way that you might have questions to, that you might take another step in. With that said, let us turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God and to the gifts that God has given us as we share in what God has given as the ushers wait on us for morning tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be both pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Growing up, I always heard people use the phrase, be ye also ready. I heard preachers and pastors say it when they wanted to encourage or maybe scare those of us who were aspiring to preach. I heard other adults use it when as kids we'd be asked to do something in the service at the last minute that we really didn't have much time to prepare for. And then naturally I heard other kids use it as well as we just walked around literally repeating everything we heard everybody else say. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't until a few days ago that I actually realized it was one, a partial statement, and two, was actually in the Bible. I mean, I know I probably should have known that part before, but if I can be honest, I really haven't always been sure what exactly that meant. My initial reaction then and now is, but why? And also, can't you just give me advance notice so that I can be the amazing master planner that I am? Yeah, I was that kid. If you told me something, I almost always responded with, okay, but why? And if we're honest, I'm that adult too. I need answers, I need clarity, I need full understanding from the very beginning before I ever commit. Or at least that's what I tell myself. Because the reality is life doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you're just told to be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. So we're just told to be ready, but the when and the why don't exactly follow that statement. You're just supposed to take heed accept it, and remain faithful. So here we are, on this first Sunday of Advent, a time in which we anticipate and wait with expectation for the coming of Christ, we are invited to do this together, to take heed and accept the call to remain faithful while we wait. But before we do that, it's important to name that our waiting will not be easy or without some discomfort. You see, the reality is, just as we see in all four of the lectionary readings for this morning, this period of waiting comes to us in the midst of all that is already happening around us. Times of chaos and confusion, discomfort and uncertainty, pain and loss, destruction and despair, judgment and evil times. It sounds a lot like now, doesn't it? I mean, one only has to turn on the news and wait a couple of minutes before the headlines start to remind you of the painful world in which we live. But you know, it's also in reading these passages and paying attention to our present reality that hope begins to peek out from behind the window panes of life. Hope in the fact that we have scripture right here to help guide us through those tough times. Hope in the fact that maybe if we just keep reading, there will be good news for us to hold on to. And so we accept that call to wait. Not to wait with discouraged spirits or lack of belief, but to wait with anticipation and expectation for the coming of Christ, a time when we know things really will be better than they are right now. And it's this spirit of anticipation and expectation that allows us to wrestle, to ask questions, to try and make sense of it, to look for that clarity so many of us need before we can fully commit. It's in that wrestling that we become free to ask those questions. What do we do while we wait? How do we wait responsibly? How might we best ready ourselves? What does it mean to wait? in the midst of trying and turbulent times? What does it mean to be faithful while we wait? 
These are questions, my friends, that we can return to repeatedly throughout this Advent season, encouraged by the fact that on the other side of those questions, there is the promise of Christ's return. Our questions and our circumstances, our doubts and our worries, all that is happening in the world around us does not diminish or alter that promise. Christ is coming. And it's knowledge of that very promise that undergirds our ability to remain faithful, to continue to trust and believe in a God that is present with us in the waiting, and a Messiah that is coming again soon. So suddenly the thought of waiting doesn't feel so daunting. While waiting, we are simply called to remain faithful. And according to today's scripture passage, we do so by continuing to do what we are already doing. The truth is we all have a routine that we follow. Those things that we do daily, weekly, and monthly to keep us on track in life. And while we should never be so glued to the routine that we forget what it means to live, there is comfort in knowing that the return of Christ will happen in the midst of what we do on a regular basis. So perhaps the reference to the days of Noah was to remind each of us here today that being ready does not require us to stop what we are doing and to prepare for some event that we can't even predict. So for all of the master planners in our midst like myself, you can take a deep breath right here. Because being ready does not require excessive or unnecessary planning that brings about more stress than it does peace. Instead, we are being called to consider our routines, those things that we do regularly, and to make sure that in those routines, we are being faithful to God. Are we focusing on things that matter? Are we making time for prayer and devotion and time with God? Are we slowing down long enough to appreciate and value the life that we have been given and the blessing that it is to be here? Or are we so stuck on the routine and what needs to get done that we're missing God in the moments of life? Perhaps in these next few weeks of holiday planning, we will pause every now and then to consider those questions. We are being called to remain faithful. And here again, today's scripture passage encourages us to do so by considering our relationships. Each of us are in relationship to and with someone else, whether it is God, ourselves, or the people around us. And what if getting ready during this season of Advent is about being faithful to the relationships with which we have been entrusted, caring deeply for the well-being of ourselves and those around us, not taking one another for granted or becoming so caught up in comparing ourselves that we lose sight of the gift that we are. Being ready in this way might mean taking an inventory of those relationships in your life and asking yourself, am I being faithful to God? Are we being good stewards over our relationships as much as we are our resources? Are we making time for ourselves in the midst of being needed by everybody else? Are we sowing faith, hope, joy and peace into those for whom we have been entrusted to care? Or will we find ourselves so busy during this Advent season, checking off to-do lists and getting ready, that we miss God in the opportunity to form and nurture meaningful relationships? We are being called to remain faithful. And hidden within the passage of scripture for this morning is another reminder to remain faithful by remembering the teachings of Christ and that call to be righteous. As we reflect on the words that Jesus shared with his disciples, we know that among them was the call to care for the least, the lost, and the forgotten, to be concerned about and compassionate towards those living at the margins to turn our hearts and our attention toward joining God in creating a more just and equitable world for all of God's children. So perhaps our charge to keep awake and to be ready during the season of Advent also has to do with doing what is right. 
advocating for righteousness, speaking up about things that are wrong, are wrong, joining God in the fight for justice. Being ready in this way might mean taking a personal inventory, a heart check, if you will, of our own commitment to righteousness and doing what is right, and then asking ourselves the question, are we being faithful? Are our hearts and ears attuned to the cries of justice? Are we getting involved in the things that suit and honor our neighbors, or are we only concerned with what suits ourselves? In fact, do we even know who our neighbors are? Are we committed to joining God in creating a more just and equitable society? You see, the truth is God is already present and active in this work. So maybe today God is challenging us to join in and get involved in the work that matters, the kind of work that starts in our hearts and then manifests in our actions, the kind of work that requires real commitment. And I know you might be sitting here thinking, geez, this sounds like a lot of work. Being ready and prepared sounds like yet another thing that I need to create a to-do list for, carve out time in my agenda to accomplish, and makes me a little nervous about messing it up. But here's the thing. None of these are things for us to simply do. They are postures of waiting for each of us to adopt, postures that grant us opportunity to imagine the season of Advent a season we return to year after year after year with fresh possibility, creative faith, and renewed hope. This is an opportunity to do Advent a little differently this time around. So friends, it is true that Advent is a season when we are being called to wait. But it is also true that we are being called to remain faithful while we wait to consider the ways in which faithfulness in God might be reflected in our routines, in our relationships, and in our commitment to righteousness. And the good news is we do not endure the season of Advent alone. No, instead we do so with one another and with a God who promises to always be with us. We do so with the promise in mind that Christ is coming again soon. And then we do it with a renewed sense of hope, that hope that calls us out of despair and discouragement about what we see around us and into partnership with a God already at work, inviting each of us along to imagine the better days that lie ahead. So this Advent, let us consider what it means to wait with faith and with hope with anticipation and expectation for the coming of Christ, a time when we know things really will be better than they are right now. So together, may we heed that call, and may we consider what it means to be ye also ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. May it be so. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. time to be a light to the nation. He humbled himself in obedience and freely accepted death even on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread He gave thanks to God, and then he broke the bread. And in the brokenness, in the brokenness, he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took a cup, and again he gave thanks, and he gave it to his friends, and he said, drink from this, all of you, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves, that's all we actually have ourselves, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We will take communion today in stations. There'll be two stations here at the front. There'll be two stations at the cross aisle. We need to do it this way until we have use of the organ again. So we'd ask that you come forward. You've received a piece of bread. Simply take that bread, dip it into the cup, and then eat. For those who might need gluten-free, we have it available. Simply come to this station here. I will be there. Simply ask for it, and I will grab it for you. 
so that none may be prohibited. If there is anyone with mobility challenges that might prevent you from coming forward, please just stay where you are, let an usher know, and we will bring communion to you. To be clear, this table is open to all. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church to participate in this sacrament. All that we ask is that if you come, you do so earnestly seeking the new life and forgiveness that is being offered to you. Those who live in this community and especially in Brighton recognize the fragility of life again this week. Sometimes we forget that this was a last supper. You never know what a day is going to bring. We never know when a, some meal, some day, will be our last. But we do know that we have this moment and a choice about how we are going to use it. Communion is called communion because it connects us with all of those who have come before and all who will come after. But it allows for a moment from one human being to connect with another, and in so doing, to discover the living Christ. So if you come today, I, come, I pray that you come seeking that promise of life, and recognizing the gift that it is to share it with another soul. All is prepared.
We give you thanks for this holy mystery in which we share in your grace. Grant that we, strengthened by the communion of saints, offer this world hope and peace through our living. Amen. May we do so by remembering to remain faithful while we wait. And as you prepare to leave this place, I pray that the grace of God would go with you and that the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, would guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.